Welcome everybody to Digital Beats, where we discuss the latest in technology, news, and innovative trends in digital transformation. Today's discussion will be super interesting. We'll be talking about key technologies in next generation enterprise level databases. Let me introduce you to our guests. Uh, Dr. Li Fei Fei is Vice President at the Alibaba Group. He is the president of the database products business unit of Alibaba Cloud Intelligence. He is a multi award winning scientist and he leads R&D on cloud native database systems and products at Alibaba. Also joining us is Charlie Dai. He is the principal analyst serving enterprise architecture professionals at Forrester. He is a leading expert in cloud, big data, AI, IoT, blockchain, and many more. Uh, and Charlie is also an avid tech blogger with millions of readers worldwide. What changes are, are driving the integration between big data and databases in your, in your mind? As we know, Big data was born uh, when internet companies like Google uh, in the uh, turn of the century, when they had to deal with large amount of data and the traditional relational database and traditional data warehouse systems uh, could not keep up with the growth of the data volume they need to uh, process. So what they, what they did back then uh, was to sacrifice some of the uh, guarantees offered by the traditional relational database system. Uh, often known as ACID, Atomicity, Consistency, Isolation, and Durability. Mm -hmm. So you sacrifice some of it. Uh, for example, you sacrifice uh, strong consistency or uh, strict isolation level requirement. Then in return, what you get is you use a distributed approach, share nothing approach uh, to get horizontal scaling out capability so that you can deal with large amount of data in a distributed scaling out fashion. Uh, so that's what happened back then. So the big data community has been focusing on processing large amount of data in an offline batch fashion, for example, for complex ETL jobs uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, that's why we have seen systems such as Hadoop. Then later on, we have uh, Spark uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, the database community and the traditional data warehouse uh, uh, systems, of, often known as MPP data warehouse, has been focusing on what we call online data processing from mm -hmm. online transaction processing, in short OLTP, to online analytical processing, in short OLAP. Uh, so the whole idea is to guarantee uh, what we call ACID properties, as we mentioned before, um, but process data in an online interactive fashion uh, and leave the complex ETL batch processing offline batch processing to the so-called big data systems. That has been the way for about 10 or so years. And, uh, but then with the increasing pace of how technology advances, we see the boundary between the two is getting blurred. Mm -hmm. From a business point of view, from a customer perspective, they actually do not care where you process your data, whether it's an offline batch processing system or online interactive processing system. All they care is you process my data uh, in the way that I want and minimize the effort of customers putting into processing those data. So ideally you want to have one system, at least one ecosystem to process all of your data needs from transaction processing to online analytical processing, then all the way to offline batched ETL processing. Uh, this is what we call data-centric data processing system. So with that being said, we see actually interesting trend coming out from the database and big data community. The idea is from the database side, we have seen the integration of big data technologies into uh, various database systems from relational database system to uh, traditional data warehouse systems, such that not only you can do uh, traditional transaction and analytical processing in online fashion, but you can process large amount of data, complex ETL, uh, offline jobs in one shot. Uh, this is what we call HTAP, hybrid transaction analytical processing system. 
And we have seen uh, examples from, for example, from Snowflake. And in China, we have seen this from, for example, TidyB. Uh, those open source community have embraced this concept uh, very aggressively. And from the big data side, big data uh, systems are increasingly pay attention to not only doing offline batch ETL processing jobs, but also branching out to do online interactive analytical processing as well. So mm -hmm. from both sides, we have seen the integration of big data and database technologies. And moving forward, I truly believe from a customer perspective, from a business perspective, what makes sense is to have those technology deeply integrated together. So you have a data platform that provides one shot solution for online interactive transaction processing, online interactive analytical processing, and all the way to complex ETR and computation jobs so that all the data processing needs can be satisfied mm -hmm. in one place, in one ecosystem. So that's my uh, observation on this particular trend. Very interesting. Charlie, just what is your perspective? What problems does integration between big data and databases actually solve? Yeah, right. So uh, first of all, I totally agree with Fefe regarding, you know, uh, first it's regarding all about customers, right? So uh, from Forrester perspective, we also see that there's a symbiotic technology and human loop that has been driving the, the market evolution in almost every technology domain. You know, on one hand, the emerging technologies will empower customers, and uh, which include both enterprises and the consumers, and to have their better experiences and to improve their operations. And on the other hand, we are also seeing that those empowered customers will not be satisfied, and they will request the technology vendors to offer the next level of the technology breakthrough, and they will impact each other. So coming to the data management market that include the database, data warehouse, and the big data. You know, uh, from database perspective, you know, traditional role-based uh, RDB is mainly targeting transactional workloads, as Fefe just mentioned, and uh, they are taking an asset transaction model. And uh, from the uh, and then you know, since like 2009, we have seen a range of uh, NoSQL and NewSQL databases becoming mainstream to support better scalability, uh, performance, and flexibility, uh, like the columnar data store, key value databases, or document databases. And they, they are mainly targeting the non-structured and semi-structured data workloads and following the base uh, transactional models, you know, basically uh, available, the soft state, and eventually consistent. And, and then in the data warehouse market, you know, there is the uh, traditional offerings, which are mainly targeting the analytics uh, workloads, as Fifi mentioned as well, you know, regarding the ETL approach on top of a database to do the offline or nearline uh, processing. And, and then in the big data market, we're also seeing, you know, uh, from Spark, you know, the many for the analytics workloads and uh, process offline and in the data lakes. So all these leads to the data silos. You know, the data in a database, data in a data warehouse, or in a, in a data lakes, or sometimes the data swamps. And so this is a big challenge for many enterprise customers. And so that is why big data is integrating with the database together. And Fifi mentioned about the edge tab, and in first we call it the translatical, the transactional plus the analytical, all kinds of workloads in one single place. And this will help us to manage the customer requirements because in the past 20 years, from the volume to the variety, to the velocity and the value of the data that these enterprises need to manage have been rapidly increasing all the time. And the size will becoming bigger and bigger and the format will become more diverse. And the data is also changing much faster. And, and all these decision makers also have to maintain that this kind of value in the data will be used effectively for their decision-making, for their operational excellence. So these will have another requirements toward the IT leaders. The technology leaders have to ensure a lot of things in the same time, right? First about the performance. With all these data silos, it is really hard and even more and more difficult to meet the needs 
through the data transfer or the data synchronization between the silos. And then it's about the quality. They have to ensure the data governance in a unified approach. And this kind of uh, governance won't be achieved very easily across the silos. And then it's about the cost, the cost of the data storage, you know, for the analytics workloads, the cost of the data transfer between the silos, as well as the cost for the data operations across cloud edge and on-premises environments. And then last but not the least is regarding the flexibility, how we can achieve the scalability using the PC servers to support increasing dynamic workloads. So mm -hmm. the target of the integration between big data database and data warehouse is to unify the data management in the entire life cycle to generate insights and improve the excellence. So that is our review for this question. Thanks, Charlie. Feifei, what is, uh, what is Alibaba Cloud doing to, to move integration forward? Do you have any, any case studies or ideas around what Alibaba Cloud is doing? Alibaba, we actually have uh, a wide range of data-related products, and we have traditional relational database systems, uh, we have cloud-native relational database systems, then we have cloud-native data warehouse systems. So I, I give you an example of how we are moving towards this integration of big data and the database technologies. In our uh, flagship cloud-native relational database product called PolarDB, we are building up its HTAP capability by adding the capability of processing big data workloads so that, for example, we can integrate uh, systems such as Spark to analyze the data from the storage layer uh, storage layer of PolarDB. So that while you are enjoying the cloud native relational database processing for transaction uh, uh, workloads, uh, at the same time, you can use a big data system, big data kernel to analyze large amount of data uh, being generated by those transaction workloads coming into your system. And it's easier said than done. There are a lot of technical challenges that we need to tackle in this process. For example, how to ensure uh, visibility of transactional updates to your analytical workloads, and how do you ensure isolation level as you promise to the user application while you are doing that. So those are the technical challenges we have to uh, come over uh, in, in doing so. In cloud native data warehouse space, we have our cloud native uh, data warehouse analytic DB, in short ADB, and in ADB, what we do is to achieve what we call online analytical processing uh, together with offline batch processing in one shot. So in short, we provide online interactive analytics just like a traditional MPP data house will do. But at the same time, we support batched ETL complex computational jobs just like a big data system will do also in uh, ADB. Yeah, are, are you seeing any changes in patterns of data generation and processing online? Yeah, totally. So applications traditionally, as I mentioned, uh, there is a clear distinction between uh, a data warehouse and the big data system. For example, data warehouse system, uh, data are oftentimes structured, normalized in particular formats so that you can speed up your uh, analytical processing with, with respect to those data. However, in big data system, oftentimes data is uh, just dumping to the storage layer and a lot of extraction, transformation, loading, and uh, structure finding are to be defined and then executed by those big data system. Mm -hmm. However, the boundary has been uh, uh, becoming more and more uh, less clear, uh, oftentimes from a user perspective and uh, customer perspective. They really don't want to make a distinction between, oh, which system need to deal with which part of the data or which component of the data processing pipeline should go to which system. Rather, they want to dump data into one place and being able to do all of those data related jobs in one shot, in one ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So that's why in Analytic DB, what we are doing is to support both online analytical processing workloads as well as batch offline ETL computational jobs. So that not only you can do fast interactive queries over your structured data, 
But at the same time, you can do complex computations over the same set of data to, for example, to do data cleaning, data integration, and find out structure of your data. And you can do all of those in one place. So those are you know, uh, two examples I can think of. And also in uh, analytic DB, the third thing I want to mention is not only you are dealing with structured data, but increasingly you see the needs of processing unstructured data and semi-structured data. And not only you need to deal with uh, traditional uh, relational queries, for example, aggregation, uh, group by, and multi-table join, you also need to deal with uh, AI-related workloads such mm -hmm. that you can drive out deep intelligence out of your data. So those are some key uh, features I have seen in the integration of big data technology and database technologies. And what are the impacts of these changes, especially on database management systems? Well, the, uh, there are a lot of challenges and impacts uh, made by this trend to the database systems. Uh, database systems need to be more broadly defined than before. Uh, you can no longer think of database system as just doing transaction processing, but they are capable of doing not only transaction, but analytics as well as uh, computation. Uh, and so that database system uh, needs to be more uh, diverse in, in the sense of supporting more different kinds of workloads and being able to support a much richer business scenarios than before. And users and applications, their view of database system are changing as well. Uh, from not only transaction processing to data warehouse, but also to data lake, uh, in the end of the day, it become what we call, like Charlie has uh, pointed out in his comment earlier, it's kind of like a data swamp. So all data related jobs, you can do this in a database. Uh, so, so that's a dramatic change from the traditional relational database space uh, so that you can satisfy much richer business workloads needs uh, and become data centric. It's all about data processing, data management, right? So in fact, if you go back to the name of traditional relational database systems, they are called data management systems as well. So I think database systems are being upgraded to data management systems so that they can do all different aspects of data management, data processing, and provide much better, much richer support for business application uh, running on top. So thank you, uh, Fei Fei and, and Charlie. Thank you very much for your time today. It's it's been a, it's been a really great discussion. I just want to say one thing to the audience. Uh, hey guys, don't forget to catch the next episode of Digital Beats, where we'll discuss more trends in the cloud.